thanks a lot for the organization. I'm sorry for my very bad English, which must be very rusty. I'm sorry for this. Uh, we have had um, a lot of exciting speeches since yesterday. I'm going to talk about uh, inter-individual uh, geolocation monitoring practices. So outside the framework of parameter monitoring, those practices are thought to be less vertical with fewer social consequences. This is at least what emerges from various narratives from teenagers when they insist on the kind of playful, playful side of sharing and collecting the position of their peers, minimizing at the first place the problematic events uh, that could result from forgetting to conceal their position. In practice, geolocation surveillance in adolescents brings more implicit and quite complex relational stakes and strategies of self-exposure and concealment. So that's why this communication aims to understand how young people are using the Snap Map, a social geolocation tool that is directly integrated into Snapchat, social media Snapchat, and what implication it has in terms of monitoring the peers online and offline activities in physical territories, so on offline activities either, uh, and adolescent socialization. This research uh, relies on a qualitative methodology to gather the experience of urban users of social geolocation tools on the social network Snapchat. I interviewed 27 French teenagers aged from 12 to 18, uh, with a strong diversity in terms of gender. Uh, I had uh, 15 girls for 12 boys, geographical location, age range, and cultural capital, so uh, the Bourdieuian cultural capital, uh, mainly represented here by the parents' level of education. And, and these are the main results. But uh, before everything, what is the Snap Map? So the Snap Map is a powerful tool for checking peer online and off-life activities. So it's in the range, uh, of course, of surveillance studies and presence checks online. So this is a screen of the Snap Map, of my uh, Snap Map. And you can see I'm stalking someone here because I'm stalking so, uh, Estelle. And I know quite a lot of information about Estelle. Uh, I see where she is on a map, on an open data map. Uh, this is from the startup Zenly, the French startup Zenly uh, that Snap, uh, Snap Incorporated has, uh, has brought uh, some years ago. And I saw a lot of things about Estelle. Uh, first, uh, firstly, mm, uh, I talk about surveillance by design because as you can see, Snapchat is a social media. Snapchat is designed uh, for communication. It's designed to talk between uh, teenagers, mostly between teenagers, and to take and share pictures. But, but if I see the icons here, so I see the talk, the talk one, I see uh, where I can take pictures, it's quite explicit. I see uh, also where I can not um, add friends and remove friends. But most importantly, I see that the first one, the very first one is the location. It's kind of location by design. The first thing I can do on Snapchat is locating people. And maybe I can see a little bit more about Estelle. So I can see she is quite close to the airport, which can be interesting because she, she didn't tell me she was close to an airport. Uh, I can see she's quite important to me because you see that smiley. So it's not, uh, it's pure gamification, of course. So it's not really quantified self, it's more quantified friendship here. And I see, um, considering since my day, that, um, well, I can't stalk her because she's quite important and since my day means I'm often talking to her. I see, um, I see when she was online for the last time, so I see she was online, I don't know if you see on the screen, four minutes ago, which is quite of problematic because I sent her a message 15 minutes ago and she didn't answer. So I see. Why, did, uh, why didn't she answer to me? And I see she's not moving or doing anything special at the moment because she's just walking, she's not on a car, she's not at a McDonald's, she's just just working or uh, staying, uh, staying uh, at home. So uh, I can get a lot of more information that only geographical position and that's very important. On the snap map, I can get temporal information, some, some information about temporality, about the last connection. And every time Estelle is going to connect to Snapchat, even if she connects for, uh, for talking to someone, her location is going to be updated. And that's very important. It's not real-time location, so that you think constantly think, okay, I got my location, I'm sharing my location. No, if you just 
answer to someone, your location gets automatically updated. Uh, of course, I can disappear from the map. That's a choice that can disappear. You, you can see on the, uh, on the right uh, part of the screen. Uh, I can enable ghost mode. So what is ghost mode? Ghost mode is designed to disappear completely from the map. So for everyone, everyone or only selected friends, uh, like, I don't know, two or three friends uh, uh, of my choice. I can be invisible for three hours, for 24 hours, or until I turn it off. But of course, it's not that simple. And if I go online, um, I must get a reason to go offline. Because, because if I go online on the map, I have to justify it. It can be suspicious. So for the main result, uh, the verification of the location of peers is firstly highly um, heterogeneous. It goes beyond the main objective of satisfying curiosity, even if this is often the first argument presented in the speeches of the adolescents uh, I, I interviewed. For example, so we got Anaïs, which is uh, with 16, uh, who says, it allows you to know where your friends go if they move far for friends, and we can see if people are lying to uh, about their destination. And Adrien adds, when I don't know what to do, well, for example, during the lockdown, I looked at the map to see if people were at home. So um, there is an informational gain related to the knowledge of potential transgressive uh, practices. Uh, then, beyond curiosity, my survey shows that social geolocation can be perceived as revealing many things. So, Snapchat is a truth teller. Uh, like the lie in a situation of non conformity between a declared position and the one displayed on the screen. And the screen is often uh, the one who is right, uh, implying possible friendly and romantic infidelities. The map can also display the estimated degree of sedentariness or popularity. Uh, those who move little from home, he or she. Uh, those he or she go out often, alone, with whom, uh, and so on. This dimension reveals a singular interpretation of the, uh, geographical, of the geographical position, because location data here is fully part of the field of reputational data. And that seems to be even more pronounced among young people from Provence with low levels of education. I got two examples, so Alexandra saying, oh, he's a guy who screens, we avoid him in the corridors. Or uh, Marin, 16, uh, who had, he's often in ghost mode, so he must have something to hide. So you see, it can be uh, very suspicious. Uh, in practice, it's um, one need to justify the disconnection from the map. Like Marina, uh, who says, my girlfriend has her location turned off all the time, so I'm not going to question it. But if she had it on but took it off from time to time, uh, yes, uh, I will definitely have doubts. In practice, it's also a question of evaluating the propensity of an individual to prolong a conversation, which is not without consequences in terms of relational stakes. If a person sees that you're connected but you don't answer, he or she is going to say, why don't you answer me when you are online? And that's unbearable. You can just want to answer later, but you don't have the right to do so. You are obliged to justify yourself, explained Florence 15. The snap map is understood as a marker or availability. Uh, and as such, is directly questioning the right to an availability, both online and offline. The sharing of location is then mostly contractual and reciprocal. The one who leaves the, the game cannot keep the benefits of uh, getting this informational gain and knowing the other's one location for very long. This is an example of Emily, who says, a friend asked me for my location, so I gave it to her, and in return, I said, we'll exchange it, no, you give me yours. Well, she had given it to me, but at one point, uh, she took it away, so I complained. I told her, Listen, I give it to you, so you give me yours. Uh, you don't take it away like that. So sharing one's location is definitely not a harmless act for the vast majority of the individuals interviewed, especially among the daughter of parents with higher levels of education, who testify here that their reflexivity. The geolocation, says Ocean, is uh, the geolocation of someone is super important, it's private, but with Snapchat, how can I put it? We put it on a lower level, we trivialize our intimacy, our address, home address. Even though it's super important, it's at home, anyone can come and ring your doorbell. We really have to filter who we give our location to. Uh, nevertheless, several girls in my sample, including those from privileged backgrounds, 
considered paradoxical practices, like the other one, like Emily, which is uh, who is 18. I've only put it to uh, on my closest friends, but there is uh, to us. Uh, sorry, there has to be a certain amount of trust uh, for me to give it away. But at the same time, I tell you it's intimate, but yes, I can't give it away uh, like that during a party to someone at a party who says, come on, I'll give you mine. And I say, go ahead, I'll give you mine then. So it's uh, Emily 18, who, however, conditions this playfulness of sharing her position on the possibility of keeping control. She say, what I give, I can take it back. And that's what matters. I can deactivate at any time. So. Using geolocation uh, can also be at even evidentiary purpose because the snap map never lies, so that's one of the, of the narrative. As personal data in the light of the previous results, the geographical position seems to be primarily for informational purposes before possibly being transformed into a resource when it's exploited or discussed. Uh, Alexandra warns, it's your world against the maps. Noemi adds, once I told a friend that I was at home, but in reality, I was at another friend's house that she didn't like at all. I remember too late that I had given her access to my map, and she knew where I was, and I had to explain myself for I don't know how long. This situation highlights that the device acquires this evidentiary purpose. The information displayed on the screen seems to prevail over the world of the geolocated individuals. Then, in a smaller minority, two boys in our surveys admit to having already used location data to acquire information from teenage girls who had previously refused to give them, recalling that the snap map betrays an individual's home address when it's collected at night or during a lockdown, for example. So that's the case of Adrien, uh, which is uh, with, uh, sorry, um, 18. Sometimes it's quite practical, like during the lockdown, well, you can see where some people live, of course. I'm not going to go and ring the bell, but I don't know. It's just extra information. So at the same time, we got uh, Anaïs, 16, uh, who reveals that she was a victim of this data collection. I was at home. He wanted to meet me. I said I was not available, but he told me, you are at home, so it's OK. You can meet. He knows that during the day, my parents are, work are working, so uh, I did not know what to answer. He, come, uh, he came. I did not necessarily feel like it. Well, he didn't stay long, but I felt trapped. Once he saw where I was, it was too late. You cannot go back. So considering the impossibility of going back, again, the adolescent who plays the game of geolocation must present particular and valued skills, both in the regulation and of the audience they reach, uh, and in the ability to conceal their location when they feel it's necessary. Um, that's what Ocean and Claire uh, are saying on the, the next narrative. So Ocean says, if the person has to be geolocated, I want to say it's his problem. You can activate. Uh, if you activate, you take a risk. If you do not remember and you get calls, then it's necessary uh, to assume behind. And Claire adds, there are people who leave their position to everyone, so they don't even remember that they shared it. They don't ask themselves any question about it. It's stupid. So they are quite intransigent. These technical skills which stand out here in their great verticality, make those who are deprived of them twice as vulnerable to their ability to protect their privacy on the one end and to the gaze of their peers following a potential oversight of their geographical position uh, on the other. Sometimes you forget the map, but the map never forgets you, concludes Noemi. The result is a form of mental load or mental burden, particularly for the young girls in the survey, related to the permanent management of the data and content they choose to display online. Thank you. And sorry for my bad English again. <laughs> <laughs>